everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood llama popping in. This is going to be one of my very first videos, so bear with me. Welcome to my channel. It will get better over time. And today we're going to be discussing the 10 things I wish I knew before moving out of my parents' house. A quick disclaimer for anyone thinking about moving out of their parents' house. Um, everyone's reasoning and experiences will be different no matter what you do. They're just what I learned through my experience and through my time moving out. There, also, there's nothing wrong with staying at home as an adult. If you're working full time or as a college student, um, staying at home is a great way to save money for the future, to eventually get your own place. I know plenty of people that do that. Again, this is all my opinion, all my experience, and jumping right in. Number 10, save, save, save. That is the most basic thing that you need to do before you even consider moving out is save up money. I was guilty that I did not save enough money before moving out of my parents' house. Now there's no limit to how much money you should save before moving out. It can be thousand dollars it could be five thousand dollars it could be five hundred dollars depending on how much money that you make if you make a lot of money at your job maybe you only need to save a little bit if you make very little money maybe you need to save a lot in order to pay for your bills now the reason I stress saving money is because there are a lot of like hidden fees that come with moving out whether it's in an apartment in a college dorm or moving into someone else's home um, a lot of these fees, uh, they don't tell you. When you say you're going to move out, you think, oh, well, I just need to pay for rent. I just need to pay for electricity. I just need to pay for Wi-Fi and Netflix. But they don't tell you that when it comes to moving into an apartment, you have to pay a administration fee. You have to pay an application fee. You have to pay a trash fee. You have to pay a fee if you don't end up making enough money per paycheck to pay for that apartment. Usually apartments have a rule that you need to make three times the rent in your income monthly in order to qualify for the apartment. Now some apartments will be very, very nice and if you don't meet that requirement, then they're willing to charge you extra. So on top of first month's rent, you need to pay an extra $400, which is a lot of money for a college student or a part-time worker or really anyone. <laughs> If you're moving into a college dorm, you need to save because you have a food plan to think about. You have a parking pass. You have decor that you want to buy. Everyone wants that cute shower caddy and bedspread. And you want to have nice things like a PlayStation 4 that you and your roommate can hang out and play. Um, I personally have not lived in a college dorm. My boyfriend has previously. For the third example, moving into someone's house again, which I did do. Um, we're going to talk about more of those extra hidden fees uh, a bit later on in the video. I'll explain more about that, but basically what you need to know is save enough money that you will be comfortable in case those mystery fees or fine print fees do pop up before you, you move out. Number nine, on one-time buys. When you move out, the reason that everything can get very, very out of hand with your expenses is due to one-time buys. Usually the first or second trip to the grocery store when you move out on your own are going to be the most expensive until you get a routine down where you only need to buy the basic necessities that you run out of, like shampoo, conditioner, milk, eggs. Uh, a lot of the time when you move into someone else's home, they may either not have something that you usually use on a daily basis or that item is misused or broken or old or basically you need to buy your own. And one-time buys can be very, very good. They're an investment. So these are an investment because when you buy a blender, you're going to use that blender until that blender breaks. You're going to take that blender from that person's home you moved into, into your first apartment, and maybe even to your first house if it lasts that long. So first time buys, yes, can be expensive, but they're also something to take with you wherever you go. Most people will take furniture 
from their college dorm and have it in their house. I know someone who has a lamp that they've had since college and it's just gone with them to their adult lives. So number eight, don't bring everything with you. Now, I know you want to bring those three boxes of teddy bears with you. Thanks, Dad. But really, you don't have space for them. And most of the time when you're moving out in your 20s or when you're young, you don't have a lot of space. And you may have a lot of stuff, but you can't fit that into that small space that you're moving into. You can leave stuff at home. You can leave it in a storage facility. You can leave it in your parents' garage. It'll be okay, and it'll still be there when you're ready to move into a bigger space. Number seven. Now, this is one that I'm very guilty of. But number seven is the do not try and pack and unpack everything by yourself. Because you will get burnt out and there will be those three boxes sitting at the floor of your closet after a month of moving in that you still have not getting into. Let, let me just show you, let me just show you. Yes, these are my three boxes that are still sitting here a month after I moved in that are not unpacked. Guilty. But really, don't try and do it all on your own because you will get burnt out. And moving should be something that's fun. Moving out of your parents' house, it's a big step in your life. Make it fun. You have friends and family that can help you. Throw a packing party. And when you're unpacking, uh, See who you and a sibling can maybe unpack the most clothes the fastest. Uh, without breaking anything, of course. But yeah, just don't try and take it all on your own. Have some fun with it. Let people help. Number six. Budget. Now I know you're thinking, duh, everybody knows you need a budget when you move out. But for real, like, no joking matter, you need a budget. Whether it's budgeting for those one-time buys or budgeting for your bills, just budgeting for grocery shopping. Just make sure that you have a budget. And the thing about budgets is a lot of people think you need to make this huge budget and it has to be super strict and you really need to stay to it. You don't. If you can make a very light budget with a lot of wiggle room that you can improve on later on, that's gonna be the best way to budget. But just make sure that you have a plan for your money and you're not spending it willy-nilly. Now that brings me into number five. Now this is gonna sound a little bit like a contradiction, but do not over plan. If you over plan, you're not going to be able to stick to it. Don't overthink, don't over imagine. I was very guilty of this. I, when packing up my stuff, was imagining how I'm going to decorate the place and every little detail that I was going to do and every little thing I was going to do when I got here. And most of the time when you over plan, your plans will fall through or they won't meet your expectations and you'll end up disappointing yourself. And like I said, moving out on your own is stressful. And to make it more fun on yourself and to relieve a little bit more of that stress is kind of roll with the punches. Have an open mind. Don't be so uptight about it. Just kind of go with the flow. Number four, have stable work. Now this sounds like another duh moment, but again, I was guilty of this. I got a job when I moved to the next town. Oh, I'm not originally from where I'm currently living. And I ended up getting a job the, a few days after I moved here, but the job I'm working at, although it's great and I love talking with my manager, when I first got here, the store that I was working at wasn't technically open yet. So I had to wait for them to finish construction on it before I could start working. Now that gave me a few weeks of time where I wasn't getting paid. And during that time, my lovely boyfriend was helping me out a lot and so were my parents. I was able to go and clean their house and they gave me a little money for gas and food and uh, it turned out really, really great. I did a sewing project for my grandmother and she paid me a little extra to help me out. And doing little things like that are great, but you need to have stable work, and especially if you're moving into a college dorm or an apartment where you have to make rent on time. Number three. Now for this one, I have someone that's going to help me. All right, here she is. Now this is, I'm going to have to sit awkward here for a little bit just because she likes to sit right here on my chest. <laughs> Alright, so this is my little guinea pig, Amber, and I adopted her right before I moved out of my parents' house. 
So number three on my list is to get a small pet. Now, this is only if it's possible, if it's in your finances to get a small pet, but if you can make it and your place does allow small caged animals, get a small pet. I love it. It helps with anxiety. Um, and a, a big thing with living on your own is you're alone a lot. Uh, most of the time when my boyfriend goes off to work in the morning and his dad will go off golfing in the next city over, I'll be home bored with nothing really to do or anyone to really talk to and that's when I hang out with my little furball right here and it's just a great opportunity to have some companionship and to teach a little more responsibility too because not only do I have to take care of myself now but I also have to take care of this little one. Now I'm going to go ahead and put her up because she's a little cranky that I woke her up for now. Thank you for staying with me so far. We're almost done. But we're going to go ahead and move on to number two. Now number two is don't burn your bridges, build them up. So moving out of your parents' house is a step towards independence. You're becoming an adult, you're on your own, it's very exciting, but about two weeks in, you'll be sitting on the phone crying to your mom about how you're broke and you adopted your boyfriend's dog. And that's why you should build your bridges up. Get closer to your parents, get closer to your roommates, to your friends, because you never know when someone is willing to sit on the phone with you and let you break down and, and cry about how it is hard moving out of your parents' house. There's no doubt about that. But having that support and that friendship and that love between you and your family it just it helps you out a lot and uh, most of the time when you have that support and you connect with your family more they're willing to help you in, in your times of need fun fact moving out of my parents house has actually brought me closer to my parents and i'm very grateful for that number one and that is this is just the beginning it's your job to push your future forward whether that is working full time work towards that promotion going to college, study really hard and stay in school, finish your classes and finish your degree. Because no matter what, you can always move forward. Whether it's buying the nicer furniture or upgrading to a bigger apartment or one day owning your own house and having a family. No matter what it is, you are starting now and you need to go ahead and push yourself to have that better future. All right, thank you guys for sticking with me through the whole video. Go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell notification down below so you know when the next time I post a video is. There'll be way more to come and this is your friendly neighborhood llama signing out.